Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Come on in and join the live stream on the Be the Bridge page. Thanks for joining today. Uh, come on in and join us. Uh, it's good to see everyone this afternoon. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Welcome to the Be The Bridge Facebook Live. We're glad that you're able to join us this afternoon. Hopefully, uh, those of you on the East Coast, you're on your lunch break and uh, get to spend a few moments with us. Uh, we're going to be having the opportunity to share a little bit about uh, our story as part of Be The Bridge. And uh, we invite you to uh, grab some friends, share this video with some friends. Um, maybe you have a coworker over there that is uh, interested in how to fight against racial injustice and um, you can uh, share this video with them or bring them over in your coffee room today and join us as we get to share a little bit more about Be The Bridge uh, today. And so uh, come on in and join us and uh, gather with us as we're uh, spending a few moments together to be able to share more about Be The Bridge. We see uh, more of you who are joining this uh, afternoon. Uh, thanks so much for joining our Facebook Live. And uh, glad that you're here today and looking forward to spending a few moments with you um, today, sharing a little bit more of our stories. And so please join on in and uh, uh, share this video with a couple of friends. And we'll get started in a moment uh, to share a little bit more about uh, uh, Together We Give. If you're watching us now, um, could you uh, drop a link in the comments where you're watching us from and uh, uh, maybe uh, how you heard about Be The Bridge, um, share your name and, and how you heard about Be The Bridge uh, in the comments. And we want to say hi to you as you're joining in uh, this Facebook Live. Um, we're so glad to be able to be able to spend a few moments with you today and um, we'd love to be able to uh, hear from all of you and kind of uh, see uh, where you're from and uh, also how you uh, got acquainted with Be The Bridge. All right, well, why don't we get started today? Uh, for those of you who are joining us, uh, my name is Pastor Joseph Ardafio and uh, I'm here with my beautiful wife, uh, Pastor Ophelia Ardafio, and uh, we have another dear couple that is uh, 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 two of our dear friends, uh, Keith and Sarah Riddle. And uh, today for uh, just a few moments, uh, we get to the opportunity to share a little bit more about what Be The Bridge has meant to us. Um, we've had the privilege of being co-leaders of a Be The Bridge group in the Boston area, and uh, we've both we've done Be the Bridge, both in our, uh, our, our son's schools and also in our churches. And uh, today, we just wanted to share a little bit of our story and how um, uh, we got to this place, and how you can be a part of the great impact that Be the Bridge is having worldwide in this very moment. Um, this is an interesting time for our nation and the world um, as we're wrestling with the impacts of COVID-19 and also wrestling with all of the impacts of racial injustice. And so we're so thankful that Be The Bridge is here to be able to be able to be a resource um, that helps us to be able to 
know more and be educated about um, the journey of racial awareness and how to walk towards racial reconciliation. Let me take a moment before we get started uh, just to introduce a little bit more about those who are on the call today. Uh, my name, again, as I said, is Pastor Joseph Ardefio. Uh, my wife and I planted Mars Hill Fellowship Church, uh, urban church plant here in the Boston, Massachusetts area, a um, little over 10 years ago. Um, and uh, I wear a couple of different hats, um, not only I'm a pastor, but I'm also a uh, engineer and intellectual property attorney. And also I have the privilege of serving as a co-leader in Be The Bridge. And uh, Ophelia, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Ophelia Ardefio. I also uh, serve as co-lead pastor of Mars Hill Fellowship Church in um, the greater Boston area. And in my secular uh, work, I work as a scientist um, in a local pharmaceutical company. And again, the awesome privilege of co-leading a Beaver Bridge group at our son's school. Awesome. Darren and Keith, why don't you introduce yourselves? Great, thank you guys. Um, uh, love to be on the call with you guys. This is, uh, we're really looking forward to this. Um, my name is Keith Riddle and uh, it's my wife, Sarah. And, and we have, um, we have lived and worked in uh, Dorchester, which is the, the largest and most diverse neighborhood in Boston for the past 20 years, um, both in nonprofit ministry and church ministry. Right now, we are both on staff at our church, Christ the King Dorchester. And for the past couple of years, I have taught uh, upper school Bible at our kids' school, South Shore Christian Academy, um, and have also been had the pleasure of, of being a Be The Bridge leader uh, with the Ardafios for, for three years. Our kids have been at the school for the past five years. Mm -hmm. I'm Sarah, Sarah Riddle. <laughs> um, I, <clears throat> I am the worship director and admin um, director at, CRA, ooh, <laughs> at Christ the King Dorchester Presbyterian Church here in Dorchester. And um, I also manage a co-working business space at the Fields Corner Business Lab. So a couple different hats also. I feel you, Pastor Ardenfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all wear a lot of different hats, but uh, what actually brought us together was uh, not any of our professional responsibilities, but um, our, our families. And uh, each of us have uh, three children and three boys actually at that. And uh, our boys, uh, one just turned 11, uh, one is uh, will be turning eight, and one will be turning five this year. And uh, Keith and Sarah, how old are your kids? We have um, our oldest is fifteen, and then our middle is thirteen, and our youngest is ten. Yeah, and so uh, it's it, it it was God ordained that um, our families connected, and and we have the opportunity to really kind of uh, have our lives intertwined. And so um, let's go back actually. Um, to 2016, and Ophelia, um, in 2016, some interesting things were happening in the world. Um, tell me a little bit about that and, and how that brought our families closer together. Yeah, so in 2016, um, again, our, our families, our kids were are attending the same school. And at the time, um, Sarah was also teaching at the school. And so she was helping us out because we lived near each other with bringing our kids home uh, from school. Um, but forward, uh, uh, rewind a little bit to the summer of 2016 where we um, all witnessed the uh, extrajudicial killings of uh, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling. And um, while this was so heavy, and of course we had already experienced what, what happened with Trayvon Martin, with Michael Brown and so on, um, and so just in prayer, I was weeping before the Lord because, you know, not only was this um, just so unjust, but as well, I'm raising three black boys um, mm -hmm. in this country and weeping before the Lord, asking him, how can I be part of the solution? Mm -hmm. uh, I also um, then in turn uh, shared my, uh, my burden with Sarah and um, Sarah as such a good friend, uh, lent, lent an empathetic ear, but didn't just stop at empathy by listening. While listening was good, she also was praying along with me on how we can be the solution. 
Yeah, so here are these killings of unarmed black men um, and you as a black mother, um, you felt the pain much that, much like the nation is feeling it right now with the killings of Maud Arbery, Breonna Taylor and, and George Floyd. And so you felt that pain in 2016. And, and Sarah, what was it like um, as a friend who, you know, your friend pours out her heart about, look at all these things that are happening and she shares with you that she's scared for what is going to happen to her own sons um, in this world. What was it like for you to kind of hear that? Um, you know, there are some moments in life that um, they stick with very sharp clarity in my mind. And this was one of them. You know, I think I just asked Ophelia when she showed up to get the kids, like, how are you doing? And she really shared her heart. And um, I remember looking at the kids in the yard and the sun was setting and five of our six kids were all running around screaming, playing soccer with such joy and smiles on their faces. And the contrast of the heaviness, the fear and, and lament in Lophelia's heart and that picture of our kids just playing together, um, it was, it was really poignant. And I, I think I just remember saying to her, you're right, that's, that's horrible. And, and, you know, just having a moment where we were able to share that, but then really both of us realizing there is a, that we can be a part of the solution. So then Ophelia went on a search for how we could be a solution. And we had this shared community of the school and we thought that would be a great place to start. Yeah, so really it was, you know, an organic relationship um, carpooling together, you know, um, you know, our children going to the same school and out of that, the Lord birthed this opportunity for um, you really to share your heart. And I think that's, you know, one important part is having friends who you can be honest with and kind of share your heart with. And, and Sarah was one of those um, types of friends, but um, also through that relationship, um, there was this desire to say, what should we do? How can we take action? Not just, you know, lament in this, but how can we take action as the next step towards that? And, and that led you on a search. And, yeah. and, and what happened with that search? So again, as I was saying, I was just really prayerful. Um, and God, it, God, in his infinite wisdom, um, it wasn't even like months or weeks or months later, but literally days later where somehow a, a, a post from Jen Hatmaker got my attention mm. and it was specifically about Latasha Morrison and the development of this discussion guide and the development of this group Be The Bridge. And that was such the answer to prayer that I was looking for. Um, and also the fact that our kids are attending a Christian school, it also brings it into the context, the biblical uh, in Christian context as well that we needed for our school. So then I um, sent over that information to Sarah, gave it to her and asked her to pray with me um, as well. Yeah, so that's, that's so it, it's interesting how God used those circumstances and, you know, kind of opened that door and, um, you know, using social media, you were able to hear about Be The Bridge, like some of you who are here today, you heard about Be The Bridge you know, through a friend or online, or maybe someone shared an article, or maybe Latasha um, spoke at a conference, or or um, somehow you were exposed to be the bridge, and and that prompted you to say, "Hey, um, we can bring this and and bring this to the community that needs it." And um, it's amazing that you had um, at at your son's school, at our son's school, um, you had a, a, a leadership that was willing to say. We need this. We we want to um, use this resource and and to provide it as an opportunity for um, the school to take advantage of. And so um, that kind of birth um, be the bridge. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, Keith, you you've been co-leading um, the be the bridge groups. Why don't you talk a little bit about what it was like um, leading the group and uh, and and what the first groups and and kind of some of the subsequent groups were like. 
Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, like you said, the, the leadership at our school is really open to having this uh, as a parents group as part of our uh, something we would offer to our school parents initially mm -hmm. uh, and just kind of spread help us spread the word. And through that, we kind of got some families interested. Uh, we've now done three years of Be The Bridge groups at our school, three different sessions. Uh, the first one was was a little bit interesting because we we started it in the middle of winter in New England. And so <laughs> it it was off to a rough start. I think we we got snowed out three different times in a row and then finally got it. it I think it snowed every Tuesday night for, for three weeks in a row. Um, but eventually got it started. We we um, we had a great group. It was a small group. It was it was just the four of us plus three other uh, people. And um, uh, and each group has been different. Uh, mm. Each group. Um, I mean, it's the same curriculum, but uh, we have learned different things with every single group. We have our experience has been different with every single group. The first one we had, um, we had uh, uh, a white woman who was very, very new to this conversation. She just wanted a place to plug in with the school and with other mm -hmm. parents and really had no idea this was even a conversation that was being had. This was three or four years ago now. And, and, uh, and so in that group, we had to do a lot of just kind of exploring what the issues even were. Mm. Um, and, and so we, we uh, one of the things I liked about the curriculum was it, it provides a framework, but there's, there's some flexibility within the framework. And so we, we uh, supplemented it with using um, kind of what we've called a, a racism matrix to, to mm -hmm. define a little bit more of what racism really is and what it looks like. Uh, and on, on one axis, it's, it's kind of a quadrant. On one axis uh, would be um, kind of individual and corporate um, racism and what those two things are. And on the other would be um, either intentional or overt acts of racism versus uh, unintentional or covert uh, acts of racism. So we explored, you know, a lot of times people think of racism as just those individual overt acts, you know, racial slurs or things like that, or sometimes uh, more of the um, overt intentional systematic things like slavery. Uh, but then we started to get into what are those issues that are going on that are more covert, more um, under the surface that still have real implications uh, for people of color, such as uh, mass incarceration, um, police brutality, redlining, mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of these other things, uh, unconscious bias, um, implicit bias, um, you know, things like that. And so, with that group, we did that. With other groups, the conversation has looked different. We've had groups that are majority people of color, um, and and. It's, it's, it's just been it's just been a real uh, joy to kind of lead um, each one of those groups through this curriculum and uh, it's, it's, it's just it's been an awesome experience and the yeah. beauty of the be the bridge curriculum is that you know it lays out this process that we all go through mm -hmm. in um, reconciling um, and whether your group is majority white, whether it's mixed, whether you have a majority people of color group, everyone is on that spectrum and it's applicable and usable. And, um, you know, just, it provides a place for people to be able to share and learn from each other. The one other thing I'd add is just um, because it's so discussion based, this is really, uh, it, it's not just about learning concepts. It's not just about learning um, language or things like that. Those things are helpful, but the, the curriculum itself encourages so much discussion within the group. Uh, and that's where so much of the value was for us, the people sharing their experiences um, and, and then building off of there uh, and, 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 and seeing how all of these things really arise out of scripture, right? Because it is really based in the word of God. This is, this is a gospel-centered curriculum. This is something that uh, is centered in the gospel of Jesus Christ that um, that is really uh, based in scripture and and you see these things just arise out of out of the word of God and and so um, yeah so the, the groups have been the groups have been awesome yeah. yeah so you know it's amazing that in you know in the last three years you you know had the opportunity not only to you know lead some groups uh, in in a school community but you've also had the opportunity to lead groups in a church community 
and uh, your whole church did um, a Be the Bridge study as their small group curriculum, um, which allowed uh, in, in the community of faith to be able to explore um, what racial reconciliation and, 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 and racial awareness looks like in those contexts. And, um, you know, one of the things I always hear is that, you know, each group is different. And even with all the different Be the Bridge groups across the nation, um, each group has different flavors and different ways that uh, each group kind of has its identity. And even within, you know, our groups uh, in the South Shore area here in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, each session of it has been different and that's been a beautiful thing. Um, you know, and I think one of the things that's also been um, uh, great is, um, you know, having you guys as co-leaders, um, it's been great because um, it hasn't just been one voice that has been able to lead. Um, we took turns mm -hmm. um, each uh, week, uh, a different person leading. And so uh, kind of adding different perspectives and, and, and different voices. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's been good to have that mix that we've had um, for that. And, you know, a lot of different topics have come up, um, you know, in our discussions. And so Ophelia, you know, I think we've talked about redlining, police brutality. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other things that, you know, we've, we've talked oh, about? We've, we've touched on, I think, mm -hmm. on so much, actually, um, if we think about the three years, um, particularly with uh, uh, some of those exercises. But we've talked about uh, the indigenous community mm -hmm. and um, how uh, they've been impacted also by um, racial injustice. We've talked about um, uh, uh, even like in the scientific community, just just where racial injustice in our society has touched on so many different things that when you think about how um, it impacts the way we move in our country, that it's it's a large impact in that space. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Well, you know, one of the things that I think about is that you know, Be the Bridge and, and leading Be the Bridge has not just been, you know, something we do so that other people can grow. But I can truly say as a leader, um, leading a Be the Bridge group has helped me grow and has helped me become more cognizant um, of, of how, you know, my racial identity awareness and, and also what it means um, to look at this process of of growing through uh, acknowledgement, awareness, uh, con a lament, confession, repentance, and repair. And so, you know, one thing I think as we kind of um, um, bring it together uh, for this Facebook Live is, I, I, want, I want each of us to think about, you know, we've all led Be The Bridge for the last three years, but how has Be The Bridge impacted you personally um, and being a part of Be The Bridge, how has that impacted you and, 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 and change, maybe change your perspective or, or even change the communities that you're a part of? Um, Keith, what, what, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think for us doing this as, as a part of a, uh, a Christian school, uh, for parents of a Christian school, it's, it's become, like be the bridge has become a community and we kind of we even call that we call it the be the bridge community at mm -hmm. our kids school right mm -hmm. and so when we talk about the be the bridge community we're talking about all of these people who have gone through these different groups even though they didn't go through it together uh this is a nucleus of people this is a core group of people that really um kind of understand uh, a little bit deeper of how our faith and these conversations interact and, and intersect and uh, and can speak to them. And so, um, so it's just been invaluable to know other parents in the school, to know other um, uh, families in the school who we can really go to and talk to and check in with and uh, provide um, just resources or comfort or conversation uh, in all of those different times. And, and like you said, we've, we've led it with our church too. And it's, it's just prepared us well to have these conversations. Um, and, and to, to, to build the community um, that, that kind of has language around this and, and can, can, can go further into it. So that's, that's been a huge thing for me. Sarah, how about you? Um, I think 
you know, there, there's this temptation or this idea in our society that you, you read a book, you take a class and you have mastered a topic. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing I've learned after, you know, going through the Be the Bridge curriculum four times is that um, reconciliation is a process. You know, it's like sanctification in your Christian life. Like God is constantly moving us through this. Um, and so like, you don't ever get to be an expert on reconciliation because God is constantly growing. He's going to constantly growing me. I think I have also learned the importance of um, listening, the importance of hearing other people, their stories, their perspectives, and, and the importance of asking people their stories, um, of, of entering into a relationship where you can ask people their experience and, and listen and hear and learn. Yeah. Um, That's, it reminds me of, uh, this, was, this was the first Be the Bridge meeting, um, and I forget for which session it was, but we started off with a question and, and the first session was really just a get to know you session, right? Mm -hmm. where, we, where we just kind of shared who we were and what we, um, you know, why we were there. But we didn't start off with the, the normal questions of, you know, who are you and what do you do for work? You know, <laughs> or something like that. We, we just basically said, you know, share your name and share something about who you are. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of that session, I mean, we had a great conversation. A lot of people shared um, more about their families, more about their culture, more about um, just what was important to them. And I had, we had, we had a couple come up to us and just say, I really appreciated that we just didn't mm. talk about what we did. Right. We talked about who we really are. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that, that just hits on, um, you know, the importance of that relationship uh, is, is so central to this. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. How about you all, Julia? Yeah. So um, Be the Bridge has certainly impacted me in several ways, but I think one of the main ways is um, it has provided for me a language uh, to understand uh, the uh, process that we're all on. Um, me personally, I always joke that my husband is more gracious than I am. And I tend to sometimes just, um, I can get frustrated uh, easily, but this has allowed me really to um, grow in grace, but also, uh, but also to challenge appropriately, but to see uh, people on the roadmap of reconciliation and the language that is provided through this curriculum has really impact me, impacted me to be more gracious, to challenge appropriately, um, and to uh, not be frustrated uh, when I could easily be. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing I've heard you say before is that Be the Bridge gave you a language to be able to understand the process of racial awareness. And so, you know, you can look at someone, well, not look at someone, but, you know, you can interact with someone and realize, okay, well, they're at kind of the first phase of exactly. awareness um, about uh, uh, of their journey and, and to realize that you know, everybody is at different stages and different places in their racial awareness journey. And, um, you know, as a, as a scientist and engineer, we tend to think of things in linear fashion. Um, we realize racial awareness is not linear. Um, you know, it, it, it's not just that, you know, you get the awareness and then boom, you get to the next stage, but it does give a framework that helps you understand the ebbs and flows of um, how people journey along this uh, uh, of their understanding of racial awareness. And also I think that it's so important, the fact that racial awareness and fighting against racial injustice doesn't go from awareness straight to reconciliation. And I think yeah. in a lot of places, Absolutely. we skip over the steps of lamenting, confessing yeah. and repenting. I mean, that's yes. as a pastor, that's one of the things that I'm really trying to emphasize is that this is a time and a season of repentance and be the bridge gives a language to that to help us understand that's part of the process. And so if we just go from, we wanna see peace, we wanna see peace in the streets and, and we want calm or we want normal to happen, it ignores a key part of the overall process. And that's one of the, the things that Be The Bridge gave. Well, you know, I, I think about what Be The Bridge has done for me. And I, I love how at the end of Be The Bridge, uh, one of the final steps is reproduction. And as a pastor, what I'm so passionate about is when people get it. 
Um, you know, there's nothing more exciting to me than, you know, you don't have to buy me a gift or anything else. When people get it, that is so exciting for me and warming for me. And so how Be The Bridge has impacted me is that it has impacted the places um, that I live in and I work in and, and it's impacted our, 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 our children's school. It's impacted my workplace. Um, you know, I'm so thankful um, that long before we knew we would need Be The Bridge, God was working in the heart of Latasha yeah. to put together this curriculum, to refine it, to make sure that it was ready clear, concise, um, resources available, yeah. and just at the right time, yeah. you know, because I mean, could imagine this, that we imagine we would be in this time right now and people would be scrambling together to say, we've got to put together a resource that helps people navigate through racial awareness and understanding how to fight against racial injustice. But the beauty of God and his foreknowledge is that long before we were ever thinking about this, God was already working. And, and that was the beauty of how Be the Bridge has impacted me is because you know, our, our school is a multicultural school, um, one of the most diverse Christian schools that I know. And one of the beauties of it is that we're prepared to have these conversations right now because we started this long before we even knew we would fully need it. And so um, that's how Be The Bridge has impacted me is that it has changed and transformed um, the communities that I'm a part of and everything that's going on and taking place. And, and that kind of leads me to what I wanna just close out with um, in our Facebook Live. Um, today is um, just to invite those of you who are watching today and those who might be watching on the replay. Um, I want you to join in. Um, today, Tuesday, is uh, Together We Give Day. And um, this is an opportunity for us um, to think about not just, you know, what financial resources that um, I can give, but think about how do I partner with an organization that is inspiring, equipping, and, 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 and allowing bridge builders all throughout the world um, to be able to um, get the language that they need, to be able to build community, to be able to build relationships. Um, I think one thing uh, Sarah said the other day was that Be The Bridge has been more than getting information. There's a lot of people right now who are trying to get information. They want more books, they want more studies, they want more details. But one of the things that Be The Bridge has given has been relationships. And I'm so thankful that even God took an organic relationship between the four of us and allowed us to see a little glimpse of what heaven will be like when we will all, um, of every tribe and every tongue, kind of playing and worshiping together and living together and allowed us to be able to say, let's be a part of the solution. And, and I wanna invite those who are out there. Um, you don't have to be a professional um, um, bridge builder. You don't have to have a degree in, in ethnic studies or, 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 or racial reconciliation, but um, together we all can be bridge builders who are helping this work um, go forward and impacting our, our families, our communities, our schools, our neighborhoods. Um, and so uh, I wanna invite you um, to be a part of those who are helping to support. Um, you can start as low as uh, $29 a month, but um, um, make it in your heart, not just to be committed to being an anti-racist, um, but um, where your heart is there, uh, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So make it, a, make it an opportunity today um, to think about what can I commit to? Um, because a lot of you are committed to being a part of Be The Bridge groups. A lot of you are committed to, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna listen. And one op other opportunity that you have today is not only learn and listen, but to also partner and be a part of the work um, that is going on in Be The Bridge. And so um, if you're uh, uh, listening today, you should see in the comments some more information about how to give, how to be a partner, um, how to join in the work. 
Um, and we've been inspired to be a part of Be The Bridge um, and a part of uh, the Be The Bridge community. And your giving today will help fuel the work of building bridges through educational programs, resources, and relationships. And so um, become a monthly donor, be a part, be a partner. Um, first and foremost, just be a partner in the work that we're doing. Keep praying for us. And um, we're looking forward to all that God is going to do in this season. Um, Keith and Sarah, thank you so much. So much. Thank you for, for having us. Absolutely. This is awesome. Love you guys. It is always Absolutely. Love Absolutely. And, and you guys are educators, so enjoy your summer. Enjoy your break. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, we're enjoying uh, online schooling finishing up. So uh, uh, we're <laughs> glad to be able to have our, our summer escape at home. So. Uh, those of you joining us today, thanks so much for being with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon.